Hi folks, welcome back to Spandan. This is Shaina, your soft skills and calm skills trainer. Well, my dear viewers, today we'd be talking about one of the most significant topics of English language, which is phonetics. But before we proceed any further, let me tell you what exactly is meant by phonetics. Dear friends, in simple language, you may say that phonetics are things related to pronunciation. It is basically the study of sounds of human speech using mouth, throat, nose, lungs. Well, my dear viewers, as I've already told you earlier, that English language is a language of very stylish people be it their way of carrying themselves, their dress sense, their way of living, or whatever maybe. Everything has its own style. So how is it possible that their language would be styleless? If you can speak in English the way it is really spoken, you'll be understood in most corners of the world. And when it comes to traveling, or finding respectable employment, English doesn't really have rivals. Dear lovey -dovies, nowadays, speaking English is seen as almost a necessity as more and more companies expand into global market. It is only natural that they look for candidates who can speak comfortable, flawless and effective English. My dear friends, perfecting English as a global medium of communication is a great way of bolstering your CV and making yourself a very competent and attractive candidate for employers. Dear friends, speaking English the way it is really spoken actually reflects back on your personality and opens many doors for you in the professional world. Well, according to some great linguist, the majestic roof of English language stands on two very strong pillars called sound and style, which brings us back to the science of English language, that is phonetics. So, Without any more delay, let us get started with our today's session. So my dear friends, to begin with our today's session of phonetics, let us get started with our long vowels today. Well, my dear friends, in long vowels, I'd be explaining you all these five long vowels that are present in phonetic symbols. So to begin with, first we have a phonetic symbol that looks like I with two dots in front, which produces E sound, E as in buddy E. For example, in words like sheep, this is not ship, this is sheep, sea, tree, or evil. Now, this is not evil, this is not simply tree, this is tree, this is evil. Okay? Well, the next phonetic symbol is a with two dots in front, which makes a sound, a as in bada. For example, father, farm. Now, this is not simply father, this is father, farm, arm, or calm, calm down, calm down. Now, this is not simply calm down. It's calm down. So it's ah, uh, not simply ah. Uh. Next that you see here is this kind of phonetic symbol that produces o sound. O as in fault. Now this is not simply fault. This is fault. Fault. This is not horse. This is horse. Horse. Just a slight difference that we make. But it does make a big difference when you speak. So this is not horse. This is horse. Horse. Now this is not drawer. This is drawer. Drawer. Sim similarly, this is not organ. This is organ. Organ. Getting my point? 
Well, the next that you see here is U with two dots. Again, it means a little stress. The U sound. U in Hindi, that's there. That simple U sound. That is available in words like shoe. Now, this is not shoe. This is, sh this is not true. This is true. You. Do. Getting my point? Next, next that we have here is this kind of symbol that makes a sound. Now, this is a little tricky at times. Tricky as in, you just, get to, you just need to be a little careful while pronouncing this. And it's on your tongue. But you need to practice the sound because generally, what we do in India, we generally skip those important sounds that are available. And... That makes us sound very, very plain. So that is what we need to learn through this video, that these important details while talking are really, really important. Now, as I said, this is a sound. Now, if you, once I read the word, you'll understand what exactly I mean to say here. This is not simply bird. It is word word so a little o sound that you hear from me now this is generally we call it as burn burn she burned herself now this is not burnt or burn this is burn burn now this is not curd hey i've got some curd or i've, I've got some curd in the dinner today so it's not curd it's curd curd now, similarly, this is not heard. This is heard. Heard. So, I hope you are now clear with the doubts that we often make. And now, next time, whenever you speak, I hope and pray that you are going to get careful. And also, you will be able to understand what exactly these symbols, what sounds do these symbols produce and where all we can use them. So, dear friends... We just completed to long vowels and now we begin with the short vowel phonetic sounds and their symbols. So dear friends, in the long vowels we had five symbols and their sounds and in the short vowels we have seven phonetic symbols with their sounds. So to begin with, the first one that you see looks like a capital I produces the E sound. The E sound as in choti E sound which is present in few words like s-h-i-p is ship this is not sheep this is ship this is busy so here when i say busy the e in the e sound that comes in between is the sound so it is busy now this is women women w-o-m-e-n is not woman it is women women so here comes the actual phonetic symbol the e sound women next word that you see here is b u i l d which is build build so the e sound build when i'm saying build the e sound that comes is the phonetic symbol well the next phonetic symbol is something that looks like e but this e produces the sound of a a as in a few words, a as in few words like head. So when it is a sound, it is head. Now this is pen, the a sound. Men said. So the a sounds that we are pronouncing or the, the, the sound that we're producing here is a sound. The a sound is present in said, men, pen, head. All right. Well, the next phonetic symbol is basically a joint A and E together, a combined A and E. Well, this combination produces a beautiful sound, which I often tell you to use. That is a smiley sound. The smiley sound that I often talk about is basically this sound. So this phonetic symbol produces the sound of A. When I say smiley sound, I mean to say you got to stretch your mouth, only then you'd be able to pronounce these words. For example, a sound as an apple. Now, if you do not have a stretch here, if you do not smile or you do not stretch your mouth here, it'll come like apple or apple. 
which is obviously wrong. So the right pronunciation is apple. Apple. This is had. Next is fat. All right. Moving on. The next sound that you see here, which is pretty different and doesn't look like any alphabet, this sound basically produces the sound of uh. The uh sound that is there in simple language in Hindi, chota a. Uh. Chota a uh sound that is present in words like cup or love. So I'm not saying love, I'm saying love. Love. There is an a uh sound here. Now this is not money, simply money. It is money. Money. Tub. All right. Well, the fifth phonetic symbol is this, which looks kind of like like looks like a D, some sort of D, but it is not D at all. Basically, this word, this phonetic symbol, produces the sound of O. O that is present in words like coffee, toffee, or hot. Now we cannot call it as hot. It is not hot. It is hot. Stop. Want. We cannot call it as won't. I want that. No. I want that. I want that. Socks. Well, the next phonetic symbol that looks like a U. Well, this sound, this phonetic symbol produces the U sound. A little bit of U sound, which is present in words like G double O D. Now you we do not call it as good, we call it as good. Good. It is just good. Now this is not foot, this is foot. Foot. Next word it is of course not pull, it is pull. Pull. So we do have O sound. We do have that O sound, but it's very, very subtle. So it is pull. Now this is hood hood all right well the last and one of the most used phonetic symbol is this an opposite e you may call but basically this is called as shua this phonetic symbol that we call as shua is basically a sound that produces a, the sound the a sound but one fourth of an a sound as you can see i've written over here one fourth of a sound is produced by this shua. We must have thorough knowledge of these words and their symbols and their sounds. However, it is more important to make use of these words properly. So, that was all for today. I'll catch you next time with another session on phonetics because this is yet not done. We have a few more sounds coming up, a few more uh, symbols and their sounds coming up. That's consonant sounds. Then we'd have the diphthongs and the triphthongs. So what are the consonant sounds or the diphthong sounds or the triphthong sounds? We will surely be doing later on. But for now, this was all for today. So do practice them and catch you next time in the next video. Till then, goodbye. Take care.